The tropical island of Guam saw intense fighting during the Pacific War that left thousands dead, including civilians, as Imperial Japanese troops and U.S. forces fought for control. Eight decades later, people on both sides are still looking for closure. NHK World's Sakai Noriyuki reports. Echoes of the Japanese occupation stand in stark contrast to Guam's image as a lively holiday destination. This runway at Guam International Airport was built by local people, forced to work by their occupiers. A ceremony was held nearby in July to mark the 80th anniversary of liberation. This man's mother was one of the forced laborers. She had worked here during the war and uh, she passed away before they did the first memorial. So I kind of made a promise to uh, come every year. During World War II, Japan deployed about 20,000 troops to Guam, but they were routed within three weeks of the U.S. landing in July 1944, with some 19,000 killed. Matsumoto Heitaro lost his uncle Golo, a signal officer during the war. Neither his remains nor belongings have been found yet. The war will not end until the remains of the deceased soldiers are returned to their hometowns in Japan. I truly feel that way. So far, the Japanese government has brought back only 516 sets of remains, less than 10 percent of the total unaccounted for. U.S. military bases take up about a third of the island, restricting access to much of the land. Even on private property, there must be concrete evidence of remains before excavation is allowed. Japan still runs field surveys in search of clues. This Guam resident says he heard there used to be caves dug out by the Japanese military along a labor bank, and that many of them had died there. Using ground penetrating later, the team found a place where a lock could have been removed. But no direct evidence of caves was found this time. Efforts to continue the search led to 10 sets of remains being handed over to Japan this summer. We'll never forget the atrocities of war, uh, but that doesn't stop us from moving forward to forge friendship and uh, relationships with key partners. And of course, Japan is one of our key allies and one of our partners in this part of the world. We'd like to use this as an opportunity to strengthen efforts to recover the remains in Guam. At the memorial service held by Japanese residents of the island, Matsumoto called for support to recover the remains. The most important thing is not to forget. Eighty years have passed, but I will not give up doing my best as long as I draw breath. The passage of time may make what happened in Guam a distant memory for most, but some believed families in Japan still hope their lost relatives can come home. Sakai Noriyuki, NHK World, Guam.